Welcome to Stepping on the Mat, podcast episode 006 with me, Aaron Martinez. Today's guest is a high school wrestler, which whom this podcast was built around. He'll be one of the feature athletes of our upcoming documentary series, Stepping on the Mat. This docu-series will highlight grappling standouts and their journey to fulfillment. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Tyler Harper. Welcome, Tyler. What's up? What's going on? Nothing much. So here we are again. We got the lights, camera, action going. Um, so what's you just graduated from uh, your junior year. Yep. You're done. Summer summer is on the cut. So um, what's what's what are you doing now? Just hanging out, wrestling. Just that's about it. So you still are you still training over at Moen Academy? Yeah, Moen. I go at, like different places. Like went to Central last night. Grandview every once in a while. Just like hopping around so what else been going on what do you what else you've been doing spending your time since school's been out i know it's been a short time but yeah um i don't know just hanging out with my brother a lot he just got back home i want to say two or three weeks ago and just hanging out with him and, stuff. and, and your brother goes to where again central he goes to central out yep. in pella right yep, pella. cool and he wrestles out there as well mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about trent and what what weight he wrestles and how his season went he went 41 this year yeah, he he was uh ha he had a good time I guess this year. Yeah. And it, what year is he in right now? He's gonna be a sophomore next. He's gonna year. be a sophomore next. Yeah. Year, so so he got on the starting lap as yeah. a freshman. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But did no. he get how? So how does that work? Since like, <clears throat> since he is not on the the starting roster, the lineup. Uh, how how much competition does he get then? He well, he had like a tournament almost every weekend at the beginning of the season. Oh wow. Yeah, like. Everywhere like Missouri, Saint like Saint Louis, Missouri, places like that. Yeah. We wa we went up to a lot of the tournaments too. So you did get to watch yeah. him wrestle quite a bit. Yeah. That's good. Have you seen any like big improvements from him? Like notice that you noticed between like high school and college, besides obviously his maturity and growth. Yeah. yeah, I mean he developed a lot more shots. Yeah, he got better there. Like his low single got a lot better, stuff like that. Yeah, and you guys have kind of like shaped each other, right? Yeah. Sore, sharp, and sore. Yeah, we work out all the time. <laughs> I bet that started pretty early in life. Yeah. yeah. So, like, how long did you guys stay like pretty close in weight, or was he just always a little bit bigger than you? He was, yeah, he was always pretty, pretty much bigger than me. That's good, man. Having yeah. a brother as your training partner, man, that's what we all hope for. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, um, so let's talk about maybe some, you know, you had, you know, high school, like we, as parents, we kind of always tend to be like, think it's just like place you just drop you off, but it's a long, it's a, like a season of life, you know what yeah. I mean? Like a whole school year. So maybe capitalize on some, and it, this can be off wrestling topic as like maybe some highlights of your school year for yourself as a junior. Um, highlights were probably just wrestling season and just finishing school. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy right now that I'm already going to be a senior. I know, dude. You're nice. going to be doing like all the senior picture stuff yeah. now and all that good jazz. Um, so like, what about, um, for you, uh, and this can be anything, like I said, like what are, what's one memory beside, and we'll get to the wrestling part outside of wrestling that kind of stands out in your year. It could be something your friends did or anything. Oh man. Well, my science class, man, that w that was crazy. I I had like two or three of my friends in that class, and that we would just mess around all the time. <laughs> I don't know. That was my favorite class this year. And then, what's your what's your wrestling standout highlight for you? Obviously, obviously, yours, you know, placing second in state is an amazing accomplishment. But what maybe something somebody else did, or or something that you remember during the season that was just like had you in your feel goods. I don't think I really had, like, a specific, like, favorite memory, but I just kind of liked hanging out with the team, especially, like, the seniors this year. That was, like, my favorite, favorite, like, class that came through. I was, like, friends with a lot of them, like Maddox, Donovan, mm -hmm. all them. And that's great rapport. I mean, you guys have been wrestling with each other for a long time yeah. as well. Yeah. It's going to be weird next year without them. Yeah. I mean, you were the team captain, one of the team captains this yeah. year, correct? Yeah. Um, and I imagine that's going to continue that process next year. So yeah, you're going to be, you're going to be in lead. I mean, you, when I talked to coach Brown, I interviewed him on here and 
he was saying, you know, he kind of counts on you as that key lead in the room. You, yeah. you know, you take responsibility for a lot of the warm ups and motivating the guys. I've gotten to see that personally, um, trying to get Asaya up, you know. So that's cool that um, you've uh, taken that leadership role you know, and accepted it. So I'm excited to see you get at it next year and see how you lead your team yeah. again. So uh, what's your current training regiment look like right now? Um, practices Monday or Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And then I'll just get like lifts in like on the days off and stuff. Yeah. I noticed you're picking up some weight. Yeah. You look a little bigger than I, yeah. than you were last time I seen you. So, um, so you, we, last time I spoke to you, you we were talking about, you know, jumping up cause you were 106 and you're right now you're currently ranked like 15, right? Yeah. 15, Overall. 16, right. Like that, yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, to even be up in, in that echelon and the upper numbers like that. Um, so what do you, what are you doing now, um, to, you know, work yourself up? I think you said you're going to go 113 next year, right? Yeah. Well, for, uh, or next season. Yeah. Junior duels in Fargo. I'm going to go 106. Just, see what happens there because i think i'll have a better shot there sure and then after that i'll just eat get big 113 120 we'll see cool. definitely never see six after that again right right so like <clears throat> you got we talked about uh some weightlifting getting ready to happen for you guys your team are you start getting together early not having wrestling practice but having just like training and workout mm -hmm. sessions right yeah Cool. So, like, that consists of weight training and cardio, or yeah, uh, we have open mats and stuff. Excellent. On Sundays, and then Brown opens up the room two, three times a week. Yeah, that's awesome. You getting some of the younger guys in there that are yeah. There, there's a lot of freshmen in there. A lot of freshmen and eighth graders. That's good stuff, right there. I mean, yeah. that's the future of the team. Yeah, when you step out next year, you know, that's that's the guys you got to work on now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, um, current reg re uh, training regiment's going well. You're getting plenty of practice. Like you said, you're, uh, working over at Moen's Academy, um, getting ready for your next competition, which is going to be Fargo, right? Um, junior duels, the junior duels. That'll be in two weeks, two weeks. Yep. Where's that going to be at? Tulsa In Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yep. You getting excited about that? Yeah, I am. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Any anybody in your uh, in your bracket that you're anticipating that's going to be in there? Uh, I'm not too sure. It's just different states bringing different kids, so I'll probably see a lot of kids I know. Right. Right. And have you competed at Tulsa Nationals before? Yeah. How'd you How'd you do well, the last the time you were there? The preseason, the kickoff one. Mm. I I think I lost in the blood rounds or something like that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you got that coming up. Um, and then July, right? That's when Fargo is. Yeah. July, July North Dakota. Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, that tournament specifically. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. <laughs> Best tournament. <laughs> it's, it's like the biggest, it is like one of the biggest tournaments, yeah. right? Yeah. In the nation. Yeah. There's so many kids. And then I've been there twice and last the two years ago, we didn't get to ride a bus up or anything. We just, um, Drove up separately because like COVID and that stuff. Sure. And then last year, we got to ride a bus up and stay in the hotel with like all the other guys and stuff. Oh, so excellent. that was a lot different. And who who did you travel with on a bus on that one? Uh, it was a big charter bus. It it was just like all the kids. Okay. Yeah, all the like juniors. Nice, nice. So that's like your kind of like the the highlight of the this off season wrestling, right? Free yeah. Are you doing freestyle and Greco both? Uh, no, just freestyle. Just freestyle? Yeah, I'm not a big Greco guy. <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah, it's like, it's like judo. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Um, so looking forward to that. Do you know who's, um, who's going to be traveling with, with the Moen team? Yeah, I know. If, there's a, there's like 30 something, but like some of the kids that like everyone would know would be like Max Riggins, Connor Pfizer, Mike Slade. Those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, Iowa's got, man, just strong representation yeah. all the time, you know, but it's cool to see, um, watch it from this platform over here, from the seat over here to watch you guys, and that's just how talented you guys are, man. Just yeah. across the board, your guys' levels of 
increased since, you know, over the last 10 years, I've seen wrestling improve and change a lot. So what did you, um, what did you place last year at Fargo? Uh, fourth. Yeah. Fourth at Fargo. That's a, that's a huge deal. So yeah. explain to us, um, that haven't been there or seen how the brackets are set up. Like what are we, what's the size of each bracket? Uh, Last year, I think mine was like a 64 man bracket, but there's a lot that get up to like 128, and it's just or like 256. It's crazy. <laughs> like you, you're scrolling on Flow Wrestling, you're looking for your name, and yeah. you're just scrolling. It's it's nuts. <laughs> that is huge. I couldn't I couldn't imagine having to uh, go through like a 128 man bracket. Yeah. So, um, what was your what was your bracket size last year? Uh. 50 plus i think something like that 50 plus yeah. and you placed fourth mm-hmm. it's pretty do you remember um who you re- competed against for the third fourth place match yeah Jaden rinkin he he's from iowa he is from yeah. iowa yeah i i think he locked up a lace or something and beat me yeah where does where does he wrestle at now uh he goes to immortal like immortal it's up they practice out of you and i yeah he goes to uh, National Playing Field, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, I I'm hoping that that I get to travel along yeah. this time, and I'm looking for a, an RV spot to park at. So I want to go out there and get some get some fun time as well as yeah. filming for you and for Scholar Slade. So that'll yeah. be awesome to see you guys um, compete again. I haven't seen you compete since the end of season, so. Uh, which I, I had a pretty good seat in the house to watch your finals match. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we move out of summer, you know, like you said, you you know, you can't believe you're already going to be a senior in high school. So what are some, give me a couple uh, short-term goals and some longer-term goals for you to finish out your high school season. Yeah. Uh, I'll just find the right college. Basically, that would probably be my first one. One of my main goals right now is to win Fargo coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's all that I basically have in sight right now. So I asked you early before we started the before we started going live here was like, what are your what are your what do you what does Tyler like to do outside of wrestling? I I like shoes a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah I always collect them, sell them. Okay, so like, how long have you been collecting shoes? Probably for the past two years. Two I years. started with just wrestling shoes, and then I started. Okay, to, so yeah. you're. It's not. Uh, so you see shoes. Yeah. I go basketball shoes instantly. Well, yeah, so. that's what I'm into right now. So tell me now. We got to back this up now. So yeah. you said wrestling shoes. Yeah. So tell me about how that thing got started. Yeah. So basically, I would just like go to tournaments and I'd see cool shoes and like like the colorful ones. That's what I liked right when I started to get into it. So for my birthday two or three years ago, my dad got me sissy aggressors. I don't know what, if you know what those are, but they're just like pink, blue, and yellow aggressors. They're pretty sweet. Would those be considered the freestyle shoe? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And then that kind of got me into it, and then I started getting more wrestling shoes like EXEOs. Those are like uh, like Asics, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and then made an Instagram page. And oh, started cool. trading and selling and that stuff. Well, I got to get on this Instagram page. Yeah. Um, give us, tell us, tell us what's the handle. What's the handle for us so we know I, where to look you IA up? IA dot wrestling shoes. Uh, there it is, yeah. folks. You know now. Follow you it. got it. Yeah, follow <laughs> it. I'm going to, man. Yeah. I'm going to go on there and see what you got. Like, what, what, uh, like, as an artist, I'm like, I'm always into like, I like aesthetic but I like functionality yeah. too, right? I like a shoe or, you know, my clothes to be like a, a certain feel to it. So like what inspired the collection of a wrestling shoe? Basically because I was a wrestler. I was just like, I need some cool shoes when I'm competing. So do you, so do you, during the year, do you switch up shoes? Yeah. Oh, well, cool. not last year. This last year I just went for comfort. Okay. Just wore matte flexes. Yeah. I think your dad told me something <laughs> yeah, about that. $30 He's shoes. like, I spent, you spend all this money on these shoes and like he goes <laughs> to pick these other ones. But that's good. That's how it yeah. should be. I mean, this if we talk about sneaker culture and talk about Jordans, is like that's kind of like how his shoes evolved too. It's like yeah. they built the shoe around the athlete. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important, especially when it comes to like useful gear. 
It's not like you're going to give a soldier something that's not going to fit or be comfortable for him to wear for long, extensive yeah. periods of time. You know, you guys are grinding every day on the mats. Um, shoes often blow out. You know, those, that's another thing you should look at too, is like wear and tear on your shoes. You know, you can give good, uh, insight to people that are trying to buy shoes about what shoes last longer and yeah. have a better fit and feel better. Like for me, are you, are you wearing Jordans today? No, I'm wearing dunks. I'll, I'll you got the dunks on? Yeah. Let me see it. Okay. Yeah. Everybody get your dunks. Yeah. They're, they're the hot ticket right now. I told I told Asai, I was like, if we open up a sneaker store here in Norwalk, I said we're gonna have to yeah, like stock too. up on the dunks. Yeah. So any any shoe that's not comfortable. Honestly, Jordan Fours. Oh my god! Right here, not, dude. Right here. I was just comfortable. getting ready to say that. I was getting ready to say that like, that's the shoe that gives me the biggest. But it's one of my favorite they shoes look to so wear. Clean, but they're just I I can't wear them for more than like a school day. Yeah, yeah. They're just because I got. I got really wide feet. Yeah. Everybody knows, see my feet in jujitsu knows that I got these really wide feet. And so the four is just murk my pinky toe. Yeah. I can't handle it. And, but they look so good. You know, it reminds me when I was a kid, I used to, my first pair of Jordans, um, I wore those things until they were probably two sizes too small yeah. for me. <laughs> my, coat, my toes all curled up in there just to stay in the game, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sucks that Jordan fours are such a classic shoe, the webbing and everything is yeah. like such a unique design and, and they're just uncomfortable to wear. So, um, so let's, we might as well talk about some sneaker knowledge, continue, continue that. I'm going to, we'll do a little game here. Okay. I'm going to show you three pair of shoes. Oh. Since you're showing your okay. shoes, I'm going to throw, I'm going to show you three pair of shoes. I want you to tell me if you know the year. Okay. <laughs> the year they came out and um, what they are okay. and what they're known for. Okay. Got it? Yeah. So it's year, year, na or we can go name of the shoe, year, and uh, what they're best known for. Okay. Okay. Here's number one. Oh, you got it, the actual shoe. Sorry. Yeah, I got the shoe, man. They're going to have it on display here. So here it is right here, everybody in the camera, right here. Sixes. Okay. Yep. The yeah. Jordan six. Do you know the specific? Are those, is that the Cardinal? Or... Close. These are the Carmines. Oh, okay. The red, yeah. Carmine reds. Yeah. Um, what year? This is a, this is the remake. This came back, this uh, retro shoe came back out in 2021. Honestly, I have no clue. I'm going to go, is it? 96 oh close 91 okay. 91 these came out jordan wore these like 91 92 season uh and this shoe is best known for do you know when he like can you get the, any imagery in your head and you guys at home can play this game too i don't did he wear him in a championship game or something he wore these up until the championship yeah. and then he changed and then he wore the sevens in in the finals or not the finals in the in the playoffs um, but he wore these in the Olympics. Oh, he these are the Olympic shoe he wore. That's sweet. So Jordan six Carmine. This is the recut on it back in 2020. This is also historically, since we're talking about shoes, this is my first pair of Jordans oh, actually. from not this shoe specifically. The very, the, that the really original pair, um, was my, this was my first one. I said, I curled my toes on for yeah. so long, but it's such a sweet shoe. You know, the design on this shoe, um, Probably my favorite piece of besides the the contrast color combo with like the red and the white is the tongue hold yeah, like, and yeah, this, okay. you know, like such a cool classic design. I don't think this thing's ever going to die off. All the all the sneaker heads like the Nike Air on the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so sweet right there. So that's number one. You did pretty good. Thanks. Number two. Patent bread ones. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. See, I thought you were going to wear your yeah. breads today, so I had to pull this one out to I see. I should have. So, yep. So, do you know when the release of, not this specific one, but the breads itself, the OGs, um, Jordan 1? One. one of his first, right? Yep. 86? Yeah, pretty cool. 85, 86. Uh -huh. Yep, yep. So, you got that right. Jordan 1, you got the name right. 
and obviously it's his first shoe. So that's yeah. what he's most known for. Um, and the obviously the the riff raff about having too much black on a shoe. Uh, the band pair, yeah. you know about the story I, of that. I watched some movie about it. Did you go yeah, see Air? Go, well, I, we just watched it at home. It was pretty good. though. It's pretty good though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. No, I thought it was an excellent movie. Yeah, you know they paid homage to it, right? It was it was kind of interesting how like Jordan's character never like is seen yeah. in it. I thought I think that, was, that made it better. I think it made it better too because you're constantly looking for him. You're like, am I gonna get it? Am yeah. I gonna get it? And then you if, don't get it. You can't really play michael jordan in the movie either right it's not him right right such a cool thing though um i'm su- certainly glad i know nike's glad that he made that turn to go there instead of going with adidas yeah um culturally at that time i can understand why he wanted to go with adidas so all right last pair all right threes car those are the cardinals these yeah. are the cardinals yeah three what year um I feel like those just re-released, but probably like the original, the the yeah. the retro, the OG. Probably nine, ninety-one as well. I close, close. Eighty-eight, 88. came out, and Jordan was best known for these because of. Besides, these are the most comfortable, in yeah. my opinion. I haven't had a pair. The I sixes are really comfortable. They're really light, actually. But um, I'd probably play basketball in the sixes versus these any day. Um, but these are a comfort shoe. Yeah. These are the most comfortable, in my opinion. Um, so what's he best known for in these? Take a guess. Maybe, I don't know, another championship game? Yeah, I think he won the championship in those. But uh, the dunk contest. Oh. When he dunked from the free throw line? Yeah. Yeah, that was the, the famous dunk from the free throw line was wearing those right there. So there it is, folks. Hopefully you guys at home did well on that competition along with Tyler. Tyler did pretty good. He nailed... Uh, you nailed a lot of it. You got the years really close. That yeah. really surprised me. So, what is your what's your favorite pair of Jordans? Uh, look probably a four, and then I don't know, maybe elevens. I like the patent on the elevens. Yeah, Eleven. Yeah. I need a pair of eleven lows. I was trying to get the cool gray. Have you seen those yep, ones? Yeah, yep, those ones were yep. cool. I got a pair of elevens. Yeah. I wore those all the time. I wear those when I usually when I go to watch you guys wrestle yeah. and I'm wearing my purple stuff. Oh yeah, I, I I've rock seen those. those yeah. <laughs> but uh, enough about me. Who is some of the people when you were growing up and still growing up that you that inspire you? Probably like when I was growing up, Jordan Burroughs. I feel like a lot of a lot of kids looked up to him. Yeah. Yeah, that was like probably the main person that I'd always watch, or my dad would show me his matches and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and you've met Jordan Burroughs. Yeah, he came up to Norwalk one time for a camp. Is that yeah. when you? Is that when you met him? Yeah, that's when I met him. And you were how old? And then, uh, probably like five. Really <laughs> I think young. I remember seeing that picture. Yeah. I was I, like in my mind, I'm trying to circulate. It's like, was he an older kid when he seen him, or was he? Yeah, yeah I remember. I think that. my dad like posted a picture or something like that the other day about it. Yeah, that's awesome. So what? What about Jordan Burroughs? Um, you know makes you like captivated by him probably he was like one of the first athletes to get his own shoe and like his own branding like the all i see is gold i wore those and then and he's just like was super accomplished won a lot Mm -hmm. it's what a lot of people look for and that man he's so quick yeah his blast double he's just super quick man yeah uh, I was watching uh, when I was working on in post production, working on the documentary. Mm-hmm. I had some, you know, when you were at Moen during practice. I was like, man, I didn't. I've seen you wrestle a lot, you know, but the close, the the further you are, it doesn't have as much impact. You're pretty quick too. Thanks. Your shot is super quick, man. Um, so be proud of that. That's Thanks. pretty. That's pretty awesome to watch. Um, so any other role models or people that have like you kind of looked up to? Probably some of my family members, like my grandpa, like both of my grandpas, yeah. Tell me tell me about your grandparents, your grandfathers. Um, the, I have one that lives in Oklahoma and one that's in Norwalk. The one in Norwalk's like, he's pretty smart, yeah. That's your owns, mom's dad? Yeah, my mom's dad. He owns a business, has a good family, um, yeah, pretty cool, yeah. smart. 
Awesome. What's he? What's he? What's his business in? Uh, it's called Consumer Credit. He just like helps people. Oh, so that's where your mom works. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she cool. works for him. That's pretty cool to be able to have yeah. mom and da- uh, mom and dad working together. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. So that's good. You know, like I think a lot of kids don't don't look to grandparents anymore these days. So that's good that you still have your grandparents alive and and that they're creating an influence for you. Yeah. What about your grandfather, your dad's dad that yeah. lives in Oklahoma? Yeah, that he's super hardworking. Like he's kind of like whenever we go down there, he'll, he'll have us like do yard work or whatever. And he's like just super cool. Also, um, he he's just like always there. And he he's not a big wrestling guy, but he he still gives me like pointers and like just like broad like motivational stuff that will help no matter what. So like he's he's really good with that kind of thing. And he's a baseball guy? Yeah, he's a baseball guy. Because your dad was the best baseball player, right? Yeah, he was catcher, played played in college. I I actually think he got recruited by some MLB teams. Really? He doesn't like to talk about that stuff, Sure, though. sure. Yeah. yeah, your dad's humble. You're humble. I mean, I think that's what people do, you know, when they're, yeah. they don't need to to shout out things, you know. It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So, I, so that means you probably get to go see your grandparents – when you go down to Tulsa, Tulsa Nationals, right? Yeah, for the dual team. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We and you guys were down there visiting when you guys went to go see the NCAAs, right? Yeah, we went up there for the D1 tournament and then stayed with them. Yeah. That's good. They, he he actually went up to a few of the sessions with us to watch. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how did that go? It was good. I, I know when I... Some of I, the matches were crazy. <laughs> Tell me about some of the matches that like kind of captivated your attention. One of my favorites was Bryce and Donian, mm-hmm. like in Levi Haynes, the semis. That was nuts. Or that was the quarters. Yeah, quarters. What was nuts about it for you? It was like Andonian puts him on his back right away. And everyone thought it was over. I thought he was pinned, but... And then Levi Haynes comes back and just <laughs> dominates after that. But Andonian's just like... He's dangerous. He's one of my favorite college wrestlers right now. Yeah, for sure, man. Who else is uh, on your standout list for college wrestlers that you look up to? Uh, right now, I'd, I mean, I don't have a ton right now. I like all the kind of like wild guys like Austin Gomez. Yeah, I like yeah. him. Do you watch a lot of wrestling? Yeah, I try. Some people don't. You know, yeah. like when you ask them, they're like, like me, like, I'm a jujitsu guy, right? Mm-hmm. But like, I don't sit around and watch jujitsu all day, you yeah. know. Um, some people aren't into that, but um, so you you stay pretty active, you know, following and watching and picking up techniques and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, awesome. Um, so let's go back in history a little bit. When, uh, when, and how did you get started into wrestling? Yeah. Um. I think I talked about this in the documentary, but when I was probably four or five preschool, around that time, my brother started wrestling, and I was just like, I thought it was really cool, because I'd go to practices and just watch from, like, the bleachers, like, the old room, just, like, up on the benches, and I just thought it was cool, so I think it probably only took me a couple weeks before I convinced my dad to let me wrestle. And Trent had already started at that point? Yeah, and I think my dad, he did it in high school. He was on varsity for a couple of years. Obviously not his main sport, but he um he said it was just like helped him like mentally and all that, so he just like wanted to get us into it. Yeah, for sure. Um, And tell me about that. Like where did you start at and kind of yeah. where did you, how did that, how did your career go? It started in, with the Newark Youth Club, and they were like, they were very dominant at the time. We won the dual state for the youth program. Mm-hmm. And you could tell that like we were we were like raised right cuz went on to go to dual state in high school, all that. But major coach, he was pretty tough on us and that helped. Yeah. He was a uh, he wrestled at Iowa, didn't he? Yeah, he wrestled at Iowa. Yeah. I love major. Yeah. He's He's cool. uh like me and him like we get along really good because yeah. we have similar coaching structures, you know, mm-hmm. and it, like it's it, I, I enjoyed coaching with him because we we bounced off each other really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
stayed in, you stayed, uh, you invested in the Norwalk program uh-huh. through middle school. Uh, and then, I think it was up until middle school. And then I went to Basa because Grant Harper was there and he, he was doing pretty well. So we just followed him there. Sure. We, I, we still went to Norwalk club, but started, uh, kind of venture out into the club area so that's when it all kind of started sure and we haven't um actually of all the people as many times as you boss has been mentioned on this podcast we haven't really talked about him a lot so maybe share with us your connection to Yubasa. yeah i was at his uh club for a while he's pretty close like going into fargo two years ago i was doing baseball so i never had time to go to his practice or anything Mm -hmm. And he started to do one on ones with me, and oh, that great. that helped a lot. He'd bring in kids, or he'd even wrestle me himself, and we'd just go at it and help me a lot. That helped me all American. Yeah, and he's a and he's another former Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah, from so Hawaii. That's, that's two. <laughs> we're on two. We got two people in yeah. here right now. So, and and where's his where's his school located at? Um, in Des Moines. In Des Moines. I think he, he's just open, or he also has one in Iowa City. I think. Is he is he quiet on the mat? In the corner, he's not. <laughs> he's crazy in the corner. He's jumping around, celebrating. It's pretty funny. Yeah, tell me, uh, give me, give me a good uh, a memory that you have from being under him as uh, an athlete. I think I talked about this one in the documentary too, but he was in my corner at AAU State, and I had like some big win in the semis, and he just was like dancing, like throwing his hands in the air. It's so funny. <laughs> And like you mentioned, like um, right around middle school, that's when you kind of started going into the club team. Yeah. So, um, what what was what would you say the difference between working in just like a, a regular middle school team, a rec team, versus going to a club team? I think the intensity kind of picked up mm-hmm. a little bit. You realize that it wasn't just, it was more than, I don't know, just sparring and technique. There's like conditioning and live, all that. Yeah. Do you still know any guys that are training over there? Uh, A few, Aiden Serrano. I went with him. At Carlisle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Last couple of years. Bowen Downey, maybe. What did he, what did, what did he get this year at State? Did he get fourth? I, I couldn't tell you. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. I kind of lost. He got fourth the year before. He was at 106, and he beat me to go to state. Mm-hmm. He got fourth that year. Yeah, so I had to run into him too. Yeah. He's a tough kid. Um, And then now you're training over at Moen, so you went from yep. Yubasa to Moen. What made that uh transfer connection? Kind of there's a lot more partners over there for me. Because I didn't have a ton of kids to wrestle at Ubasa. Sure. Yeah. And then now I have a lot a lot of good competition. Yeah, yeah. TJ is a great coach. Yeah, he is. I like uh I like that old school style. Intense, yeah. Yeah. That's just that's how I am. And so like I just do well when I hear that in the room. I'm I I can walk out of the room and be like, My kid's in the right place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know he's gonna be he's gonna be hard on him, but he's gonna do it with good intention. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, the intention is to get them as good as he knows that they can be versus, you know, them having doubt in themselves and stuff. Yeah, so and he always reminds us of that. Like if he's like super hard on you at practice, he'll still come up after you and be like, Hey man, I didn't I didn't wanna like be that mean on you but i'm just trying to get you better or something sure yeah 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 i wanted to uh do something here a little different we haven't done before is uh, i want to actually show you and everybody else a little piece of the documentary oh yeah um Excited. just a few it's just a few blips of it and and let you watch it and and see what you think yeah okay. all right let me load it up yeah i haven't seen anything <laughs> let's go I mean, the middle of February, at least for me growing up, I mean, the Iowa State wrestling tournament is, is the biggest thing there is. I don't, I don't really watch a ton of football, a ton of basketball or anything, but so the NCAA wrestling tournament and the, and the state wrestling tournament, are, they're the biggest events in sports for me. Um, and I like that for a lot of people growing up, um, especially the state tournament because it's all people in places that you know. So um, 
I really don't think there's a bigger thing for small town Iowa, especially that, I mean, it's a lot of farming and then, oh wow, it's a state tournament time. We, we, it's time to wrestle. And so, I mean, it's, it's a cool thing because, you know, if you think about for state basketball, it's, it's eight schools and for football, it's four schools going to the dome and all that. But this is, it's so big in Iowa with, you know, 270 programs, I think, in the, in the state of, state of Iowa. And, you got to think probably 200 plus are, are sending kids to the state tournament, hopefully. So there's 200 different, you know, communities getting together to, to send kids off um, to, to Des Moines, to Wells Fargo Arena, to the state tournament. And honestly, if there's a sport that I think deserves that much credit for anything, it's the sport of wrestling because it's the hardest sport there is, in, in my opinion. And, and it's guys that, that uh, it's normally a bunch of, bunch of humble guys that come in and work hard and maybe not the most glorified sport. So. For us to get that moment at the state tournament and send guys off and, and be in Wells Fargo Arena, I mean, it's an it's experience that I think kids have earned and it's a, it's a great thing. Well, that's sweet. You ready for it? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to. I like how I was like jumping back and forth. With like practice, people walking in. Yeah, different that. practices too. Yeah. You know, yeah. it showed a little bit over at Moen, and yeah, I'm excited. It's like the music. It's like gets you ramped up because that's right before that clip is actually right before you make your walkout for the finals. Yeah. So it's like a good build up. So I'm excited about the documentary, man. I can't wait to release it, and um, I think you know, doing as many documentaries as I've done like I get to sit with it yeah. so much longer than everybody else does. Everybody else will like watch it, right? Yeah. They'll watch it and they'll be like, Oh, that was good. They'll pass it, share it, whatever. But I watch it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So, um, I just want to tell you personally, we're sitting here. Like, um, I appreciate, you know, allowing me an opportunity to, to share your story and your experience. I know it's not easy to have your life kind of on, camera yeah you know especially since it's still unfolding um but man what a what an inspiration man you are uh i've heard so many great things and learned so many great things about you since getting to know you better getting to know you closer um and you're inspiring a community too i know that it's probably not a big deal for you guys as wrestlers to like go visit the elementary schools you know like here comes the kids from that are making state you know, but those kids are looking up. Yeah. You know, when you were refing at the Norwalk Youth Tournament, I got to watch you there a little bit too. And those kids are going to remember you. Mm -hmm. They're going to remember your face, you know, and they're going to remember the highlights of your high school career. And they're going to hopefully, you know, step into those shoes and uh, want to be just like you. I know that's what inspired me when I was young is seeing kids who were older than me wrestle. And seeing them under the lights and how they performed. And I was like, man, I'm going to be just like that guy. Yeah. So um, our community owes you some gratitude and, and support. Yeah. So that's a another hint for everybody out there who's watching this podcast is to make sure you support your wrestling team when there's fundraisers going on, when they got things going on, to get out there and support these guys. Because um, it's a discussion that's been had several times on this podcast about like wrestling is the hardest sport. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, but for some reason, it just doesn't get the notoriety and, and attention that it needs in a community. And I know what you guys go through. Yeah. You know, it's a long season. It's hard. It's weight cutting and, and just ups and downs of winning and losing. Um, and to see you guys go out there and, and make this uh, make the tournament. You know, a lot of people don't get to do that to mm -hmm. say that they've made the state tournament, you know. But then to come out there like you did this year and make it to the top of the podium, you know, and be able to stand in second place. And, and man, we're, I was super proud. Thank I you. was super proud of you. And I know your family's proud of you. I know your team's proud of you. Um, and you're setting you're setting the you're setting a new tone as well. You know, it's it's great having a state place winner in the wrestling room. Yeah. You know, and to, to come back to. And we got somebody that was a runner up. Yeah. So. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with the guys this year and yeah. motivating those younger guys to seeing you now to be able to take that spot and run with it. So keep pushing everybody. I love it. And, uh, I'm super excited about the documentary being released and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. 
Yeah, thanks for doing. Heck yeah, man! It's gonna be hopefully you know I've I hit all the the spots that need to be hit and everybody's happy and and we can inspire some more people to come out for wrestling yeah. as well and help you you know advance your your career as well. Okay, so um, one of the you know the semifinals match. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. It's been a what while. you remember of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mostly just like remember the warm up the most. The Thompson called me like three times. He thought I was lost before the match because <laughs> I went down to Hivey Hall. They have like warm up mats down there. He thought I was lost and I was just down there like chilling out. So he, he came down and like three other coaches came with us. And then I just kind of warmed up practiced a few shots i wasn't honestly i wasn't like super nervous thompson was more nervous than me i bet i bet yeah. he was you can see that on the documentary yeah. too <laughs> he was. you can clearly see it but that's uh, that's i mean i think as a coach i get i probably got more nervous getting up to watch my guys compete versus you know myself because yeah. you're when you're in there yourself you're just there's so much other stuff going on that you're not really thinking about winning or losing Mm-hmm. I think as a coach, it's like you're so nervous for that person. Um, but yeah, you you look pretty poised and calm that day. So you get the you get the big win, what uh, I would consider the upset of the tournament. Um, you took out the number one ranked kid, um, and then afterwards, you you know, after you have the match, you know, little time to celebrate, and they move you on to the media rooms, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What was that like? Just being under having going from this like exciting moment where you finally beat the kid that you know you'd lost to yeah and and that means it puts you in the finals you're you're finally hitting one of your you know life goals here and then lights cameras action they're all over you how what was that moment like it was tough to talk (laughs) i didn't really know what to say like in the moment and there was like five six cameras just like all across yeah i mean i wasn't really worried about the cameras but like Thought basically the whole team was like behind, and I was half the kids didn't even have like passes onto the floor. I was like, "What? <laughs> How did they get down here?" They just probably jumped out. Yeah. One part of that interview that really stands out to me is that you know um, you wanted to acknowledge your faith in your your faith in God and and as a Christian, and I think uh, you know that's people do that, right? Yeah. People do that and they throw it out, but you know there's authenticity to it too, you know, and, um, it takes, it takes courage, uh, to be able to acknowledge those things, especially in this kind of current culture we're in, you know, um, everybody wants to acknowledge everything, but God these days for, you know, the things that they accomplish. And that shows your character as well. Uh, being a humble, a humble person is that, you know, you didn't even like internalize it. You're yeah. like, Hey, I, I gotta put, I gotta put, credit where credit's due um and so walk me through a little bit about how like your faith got built and kind of how you got introduced to um got introduced to the word and to to god yeah so i just grew up in a christian household and Mm -hmm. like we went to church a lot and i feel like when my faith started to really pick up was at like church camp and that stuff because like that's when i like devoted my life Mm mm-hmm and obviously I can do better here and there. Everyone sure. sins and yeah. everything. Yeah. But I like I'm I'm always trying to work on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a, a the best litmus to like have like your faith being proved and tested, mm-hmm. you know, is that we do go through trials, we do go through uh hard experiences, you know, we do go through letdowns, you know, and disappointments and all kinds of stuff and I just I really, I honor that and you that, that you were able to, cause it is, it's a big moment. Like yeah. you could have like said anything else you wanted to in the world. You could have been like, Oh man, I, I, I killed it out there. I'm, I'm doing so great. But you know, you chose to put that power into something else. Yeah. And you talked about that, that power of prayer is like having like visualization mm-hmm. and prayer, right? Like explain to me that process for you. If like how do you how do you channel that how do you navigate that? Yeah, before each of my matches, my I use my prayer as like kind of calming. I pray and then I like I pray that I give 
all the glory to God after my match. And I knew that I'd have cameras on me after that. And that was the time to kind of give him the credit. And giving the credit, even if it just reaches one person, I think we talked about this. Yeah. It reaches one person, gets in their head. That's that's a win. Yeah, it is. And the, I, don't, I don't know what verse it is, but it's like, heaven will rejoice over one lost soul, over one or 100 found yeah, souls yeah, or something like yeah. that. And I think that's important to like try to reach at least one person. And I know a lot of people probably watch that interview and it probably helped the one person. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, when I, when I was traveling the country trying to help vets, I used to get really down when we'd lose a vet, you know? Yeah. I was like, man, am I not doing enough? But, you know, I was reminded that even though, if I can connect to one person, mm -hmm. I can make a change, you know, and that person will make a change to somebody else. Right. So, um, all right. So let's do, let's do this. We're going to play a game of threes here. Okay. <laughs> More challenging. We had three shoes that I think it's, uh, we're working in threes today. It's a good number. Um, so what would be three words that describes being a wrestler what it's like to being and to being a wrestler um toughness integrity okay. and uh, uh i'm bad at this and those are you got two good ones right now toughness men or that can be physical mentality. mental toughness mentality and what was the other one integrity integrity yeah. nice nice um why'd you pick the word integrity I think it's important to just kind of like be honest with yourself and like just know, know like what you need to accomplish and know what you need to do to be a wrestler, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, it makes you dig deep. Yeah. You know, there's moments when wrestling will test you, whether it be off season or, on, you know, during season that you're just like, I don't know if I like this anymore. Yeah. I don't know if I like want to keep dragging this out like am i gaining anything from you know all these all these feelings of doubt start rolling in you yeah, know the bible talks about that. doubt there's some great there's some great verses in matthew you should read about doubt you know and and how um but how that builds us builds us and makes us stronger as well so okay so now we're going to go to three random questions from my card deck over here all right all right here's the first question Name three famous Michaels. We should do this in a different rule. We should go someone famous. Let's go. Uh, yeah, give me three famous Michaels. Uh, Michael Jordan. Okay. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the guy that played in Apollo? Yeah. Um, Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. Yeah. Those are great. I think, yeah, I think the, the three Mikes, kind of my name, all existed in the same era. Yeah. Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah. Those are great ones, too. All right. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Uh, three things to buy for back-to-school shopping. Uh, backpack, pencils, notebooks. <laughs> No shoes? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't get back to school shoes. I just kind of like get them whatever. Right, right. Where do you get your kicks from? Um, Instagram. I mean, I've bought from StockX before. I don't know if I'm going to trust them as much anymore, yeah, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. What's, uh, what's, oh, you just got the dunks. You got yeah. those dunks. But what was the recent shoe before that one you got? I got the Seafoam 4s. Nice. I got those from the sneakers app. I, Hit on them for retail, so right. What's your so? What's your normal shoe wear? Um, I have a lot of athletic shoes, just like normal tennis shoes, and then a uh, few Jordans, and then dunk, and then I have two pairs of Dunks. Nice. And I just I just bought a pair for my birthday, a pair of Travis Scott Air Maxes. What? Yeah, they're sweet. They're like the cheapest Travis Scotts, though. Nice, dude. Yeah. I love Air Maxes. Yeah. Air Maxes are great shoes. I've seen a lot of people rocking Air Maxes a lot more than the the casual the yeah. casual wear is starting to come into the Air Maxes. All right. Last card. Name three holiday traditions. Uh, Christmas tree. Um, 
Easter Bunny. <laughs> uh, um, back to Christmas, Christmas cookies. That's yeah, the, that's good. What's your ones. What's your favorite cookie? Probably sugar cookie. Sugar like, cookies. I everyone either loves them or hate them. The ones from Walmart that are like in the box and the they have like the pink sugar. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly top. what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, those are, those are so good. I yeah, love they're those so ones. they like melt in your mouth, yeah. right? I, I'm a chocolate chip cookie fan. Like, yeah, I can I can never like cho- that's probably like my worst enemy that and like energy drinks i gotta stop drinking those damn energy drinks but energy drinks and chocolate cookies are like my downfall that's what gets me every time i'm gonna i'm gonna shout someone out real quick yeah go ahead let's send it kaden tompkins mom she makes the best chocolate chip cookies kaden kaden tompkins okay he just graduated his mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies so kaden you gotta get your mom to uh make a batch i mean i'll pay for them yeah i'll take i'll take a dozen they're so good what's the secret sauce i mean is she is she uh, air frying them is she baking them is she making her own dough yeah we gotta get up on that game man we can have some of those if they did uh the wrestling team did some uh some cookie sales i, I would probably definitely buy all the cookies yeah. um okay so moving on here what do you what do you see uh for your senior year like how what are you visualizing for yourself for this upcoming senior year for wrestling um i want to be a state champ i guess Heck yeah yeah do what i couldn't do this year and what about over the next five years what do you see not just for like you like you know hey i'm gonna go to college i'm gonna do yeah. this but like where do you see like wrestling as a sport like growing into shifting changing i know there's been already been discussions about some rule changing yeah at the ncaa level so yeah i seen a lot like maybe freestyle ncaa but mm-hmm. i i don't know about that um girls wrestling definitely growing right now that that's one of the bigger ones and if you if we see girls wrestling growing this fast just imagine what like wrestling as a whole is going to be like yeah yeah, wrestling uh, for the ladies is getting pretty big. Yeah, and they and then, I mean, having Skylar Slade on here, man, she's a she's a talent. Yeah, too, and she's a she's um a well rounded young lady too. She speaks well, and, and you know she's comfortable in those moments. So, yeah, I'm trying to get my sister to wrestle. She doesn't she doesn't wrestle. She plays softball, right? Yeah, she's a big softball player. Yeah. She's getting good. What did, has she tried wrestling? Have you like well, in the single house, legged her like, or hit the? She's like taking me down before. I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, you gotta wrestle. And she she just does not want to. I don't know. She she'd be good though. She should try she, it. Yeah. You know. She like, looks up to like Skylar, and she does, and she like isn't even part of wrestling. Molly isn't. Yeah, but. and who's the head coach at Norwalk? I can't remember. Alana Vetter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. was good. Yeah, she's she was good. Really Her good. brother wrestled too at Norwalk, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Is he still wrestling? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, she's a great coach. Mm-hmm. Um, man, let's get her in there. Yeah. I don't want, drop her off. Tell her it's like. That's decision. I can't force it, that. <laughs> got to trick her into yeah. it. Yeah. Be like, hey, man, there's a like a meeting going on for softball. He's got to yeah. show up and. <laughs> We're going to. Here's a headgear. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we'll uh, wrestle and she's like scared she's going to get cauliflower here too. <laughs> right, right. Well, you got to throw that headgear on her. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty funny question. I had uh, a mom at my gym. I always encourage them to go out for wrestling, especially if they're struggling to try to get takedowns down and stuff like that. Um, and one of the moms was asking me about like headgear and yeah. cauliflower ear. She was like, "Don't they have to wear headgear?" I said, "Yeah, when they're competing, they have to wear headgear um, for at in like high school and middle school or in high school." Um, but none of the kids wear it. No, you know, especially freestyle. Nobody wears it. Yeah. Mine, you, mine got really bad. Look. Yeah. Like it's closed up now. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's like a boil in there. I know. That's the, um, I had that same on the inside of my ear right there. Just make sure you keep your yeah. you sweat out of your ears a little bit, you Helps know, keep bit. some cotton in there or something. Yeah. Cause I got swimmers here oh. on top of having the cauliflower ear. So I had to have it drained and then they had to like drain my ear. Um, okay. So. I had you, uh, I had you up in the gym yeah. for for a day. That was kind of cool. Appreciate you coming up and showing some wrestling and getting a little workout in. What do you What do you think about jujitsu? Definitely weird. 
I felt like I wrestled <laughs> it, or I did it with a sigh, and I felt like I was in control. And then my arm just like extended. Yeah. Felt like it was about to break. I was like, yeah. But what do you, um, you said it, it seems weird, but like, what's, what's the, what do you feel like the, the feeling wise when you're doing it? Oh, yeah. Like the feeling difference between, um, grappling jujitsu and grappling wrestling? Definitely slower. Yeah. A lot slower. Like, you don't have to attack. You can like just like be super passive and then catch them. Yeah, yeah, I I definitely agree. I was um, talking to one of the kids that trains up at the school. He wrestles as well. Um, talking about the difference, you know, like wrestling is really like aggressive and and it's constant movement and you're constantly pushing forward, mm-hmm. sitting back in a lawn chair and you're kind of setting traps. Yeah, you know, and you got and stalling is not a part of it. You no, know. Yeah. So the passivity um, is works in favor of the person who's in control of the position. So um, I seen you trying to slip some punches in there too, no. <laughs> little, little hook shots. No. <laughs> do you? Um, uh, yeah, I was faking. Yeah, something. faking it. Yeah. Um, do you watch mixed martial arts? Uh, I have before. I'm not that big on it. Like a lot of people talk about, it. I'm kind of behind on it. We don't. Your, we don't. Does your dad watch fights? No, we're not. We don't watch any UFC or anything. We're not that big on that. Cool, cool. What do you do? Your dad watch? Does your dad watch wrestling with you? Yeah, he'll watch wrestling. He he loves watching wrestling. Does he watch baseball tons too? Uh, not as much. No. He, I think, I don't know. He's really become like more of a wrestling fan than anything. Yeah, and he's like coached he, too. Yeah, yeah. I remember him seeing him in the room when um when you guys were in middle school. He was yeah. up there coaching. Yeah. So as we move into to next season, anything that, uh, you know, you're going to be the team captain again, anything you want to give, you know, your teammates that are listening to the podcast, any things that they need to be focusing on now and any words of advice? Probably a lot of discipline and everything like in the future discipline with your workouts, like just focus for hour and a half that we're in there. Cause you get better like that. And I know a lot of kids that aren't great with that, and you can just tell how that affects them. But if you can focus for that short amount of time, um, food probably, eat smart. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, and so that pulls up to my next question here is about food. So, like, you know, you were cutting down to 106 during your junior year. Um, and well, you're cutting back down now, but yeah. you're going to be moving back up. So what did your diet during when you're, when you're cutting weight, what does that look like? During the season, it wasn't like super tough for me. So I, I ate clean, but I didn't track my macros as much as like I could have. Cause the practice is just five days a week, help get down really easy. Right. But right now cutting down for Fargo, I'm like a lot bigger. So I'm gonna. I'm like tracking pretty well right now, and I'm trying to be focused on maintaining around like tw- one twelve. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Drink water. Drink yeah, water helps lose weight. Of water. Um. And then so and moving into your after Fargo is complete and you're done with that, you're gonna start back on your progress to to start gaining a little bit of muscle and weight, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and what what is your diet going to shift to from when you're cutting weight versus trying to gain weight? A lot more uh, kind of volume of food. Good food still, like chicken, a lot of protein, good carbs, rice, oatmeal. I love oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Do you do overnight oats? Uh, I've, I've tried them like once or twice. They're all right, but yeah. my mom makes some really good oatmeal. Yeah, some fresh... Fresh warm yeah. oatmeal. You do fruit with it and everything, or uh, no chocolate chips. <laughs> chocolate chips. There it is. There it is. The chocolate. Every for every meet or every tournament, I have it. And Brown Thompson, they're all they all just make fun of me. It's so funny. Well, they're, it's because they're yeah. they're probably dying to get some of that because those burritos are yeah. like bricks. Yeah, I know. Big shout out to whoever I mean, made the burritos, though. You guys did a great job. We appreciate you. I the burritos are fine, but. It's not the best way to start your tournament. Right. Or start boxing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always, you know, interesting to look around and see what all the other kids are doing to kind of manage the long day. Yeah. Long tournaments are long. They're just long days. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you usually manage that? Um personally, like 
you know, sitting there from, you know, eight in the morning, nine in the morning until four or five in the afternoon and having to wait because when you win, you know, you get longer terms, you get longer time to, to wait before your next match. Yeah. Um, a lot of people take naps. I don't, I don't do that sort of thing, but I don't know. Good, good food, like oatmeal in the morning, then a lot of fluids like water, body armor, that kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of rest, not not necessarily sleeping, but I slept one time during a tournament because somebody brought an air mattress, and Keaton took a picture of me and <laughs> trolled me for it. The one time I fell asleep during a tournament, it was pretty somebody funny. brought an air mattress. Yeah, That's I genius. think it was Brock Jensen. I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys out next year. I'm gonna bring like some puzzle piece mats. Oh yeah, because dude, there's never a warm up area. No, there isn't. I've, I I don't get that. Um, so I'm gonna bring like 20 puzzle piece mats and put find a little corner and put yeah. one together for you guys so you guys can have a place to chill out lay out and roll around a little bit mm-hmm. awesome man well um man you got any other shout outs you want to send out before we close up shop here uh no <laughs> maybe my mom i don't think <laughs> yeah it's there you go mom. yeah it's a blessing and I, I couldn't be more happier to have you here with me today and and share your story with us and we're looking forward to sharing the documentary and and uh getting that thing getting that thing moving so yeah. best of luck at tulsa nationals best of luck at fargo and i'll be seeing you around tyler harper thanks for coming on buddy thanks for having me